on this episode of the DIY Pro Show, we're going to turn this into this. The bridge boards here and here maintain the straightness of this joist so that when we set our blocking later, we don't deform it in any way and we can make sure our posts remain as straight and parallel as possible. What better day to build a pergola than today? I love this. It's a shade structure for summer and we've got oh, just giant beautiful snowflakes falling out of the sky. Back to the how-to. I got two clamps set up here for a 2x10 block underneath. I'm just going to squeeze this tight because I'm going to use this later. When we set the posts in our post pockets, they're going to bottom out right here. And I'm going to screw these up with some Spax HCRX number 10 by 3 screws. And these will be helpers later. I can leave them in or I can take them out as I see fit later on down the road. To get in on this side, where it's hard to reach and I don't have much room underneath, I'm going to take my countersink. a pilot hole in there on an angle and then I'm going to toe screw it. Layer number two in our blocking assembly is lateral blocks between the joists and on top of the support blocks at the base. To set these I just take a number 10 by 3 inch screw and drive it through the joist into the block. <laughs> through the joist into the block. And the screw serves two purposes. One, it quickly and securely secures this on layout. Two, I'll remove them later and what the screw has done, as I back it out, is it creates a pilot hole in here that I can then run my 5 16 by 6 power lag pan head through which will get this secured both permanently and make it code compliant as a guardrail. Post! Guardrail post! This is the beginning of our built up post. Two by six, a two by four centered in the middle of it, and a two by six that will go on top. I've flushed up the bottom edges and I've cut myself a gauge block because the reveal on each side is one inch. So rather than measure that 85,000 times, I make a block instead. It's faster, more accurate and easier. It requires fewer moves. For this connection I've switched... <laughs> For this connection I've switched screws. I think my jaw's freezing. For this connection I've switched screws. I'm at a number 10 by two and a half stainless steel fastener and about every 16 inches up the post I set two. Spax recommends stainless steel and cedar. So the third layer of this is this 2x6, this flange, and I'll again take my gauge block, put it in on layout. That will flush it up with its mate below, keep everything nice and even. That's Flushy McFlush Flush. And 
and I'll get some screws in here and lock this baby together. And voila! 2x6, 2x4 inner flange, 2x6. Also, I think this is a beautiful day, but the snow sticking to everything. I'm going home. <laughs> we'll continue this show another time. If you haven't driven lots of screws before in a project, I recommend doing what I call the grab and stab. Grab the screw, stab it into the wood, and send her home. Gage block! Oh, that looks nice! I really need to do a wrestling match to get it straight and in parallel a nice set of bar clamps is my friend. A little bit more. That's it. Someday I'll actually put these in. Maybe I'll do that next. Yeah, I'll put them in next. To set each post, I lay it in its post pocket inside the deck framing. I go, oh. I get it plumb in both directions. Oh, that's primo. And then I fasten top left, bottom right, down here. With three inch number 10 screws, I'll come back later with power lads. The next couple of steps, remove our placement blocks, add cross blocking, doubled in here behind the post. I'll take you on a tour of that in a minute. And a tip. Blocking, if you have to pound it down to get in there, I made this tip in a previous video, you don't need to. Go back and take a blade off on the saw. It's just going to make something move, and we don't want these to move. After I get all the blocking in, remove this, cut my shims, I'm going to come back and zing this all together with power lines, 5 sixteenths by 6. Quick tip on loading deck boards. I like to load the deck boards on the house side so they're in front of me while I'm working. I also square the factory end before loading it on and then stack neatly. And while I do that, I look down the board to check for blemishes or checks or splits or knots or whatever might have happened in the lumber yard. I pick my good side and I leave it up. In this episode, within an episode of the DIY Pro Show, this is where I cut the boards and make this snaggletooth run look like a deck. It's one of my favorite parts. I left the first ones Cut to, cut to the length that I want, with the overhang that I want. Then the rest of them, snap a line, cut my way through. Ready? Steady? Go get it. Quick tip. If you have an obstruction between where the tool is going to go and where the fastener is going to go, add a bit holder to your bit holder. One, two, three. And there you have it. Quick tip for driving deck screws. Put them in your pouch 
then take them out of your pouch. Then, spend a minute or two or three, give them a quick collation, all heads up. That way, when you are driving your screws, you can, see, only takes a second. That probably saves triple the amount of time. You can then just take them, feed them to yourself, like so. We've got one rafter up, and the reason for this is so me and the homeowner can take a look at the proportions and check them out in real life. There's a big difference between a sketch on a piece of paper and what things look like outside your back door. So pergola tip number one from Mark, make sample rafters if you've got questions about reveals or overhangs, just to make sure you've got your height and your dimensions the way you want them. And I say you want them specifically because there are no rules for pergolas and shade screens. There's just your sense of proportion and what you like to live with. I call this maximum face time, and I'm not sure why. But to get the best face of the rafter facing out, I inspect it, look for breaks, cracks, open knots, weird stuff on the edges, then select its position on the posts, then I label it like this, wherever that is, and put it on my pile. I've got a number and an arrow, so that way I know this is the edge I cut off. After cutting what I call the swoop angle on our rafter, the next step is to use what is quickly entering my all awesome tool list. I'm going to take care of the saw marks and burr edges on my jointer right here. I love this thing. Two passes. And the reason for the two passes, which are each a 32nd of an inch, is because perhaps you heard at the beginning of this cut the sound of the machine change. That means there is a void here, but on this pass, I bet the sound is consistent all the way through, so it'll be nice and flat. horizontal cladding for the shade structure is a 2x4 ripped in half. For a long cut like this, I always like to use an outfeed table to support the end of the cut. And for anything that's an inch and a half or less, that's push stick country for me. Now I will clean these up on the jointer. Actual footage of me cleaning up the sawn edge on the jointer. <laughs> To make the edges squared up by the table saw and the joiner, match the factory bull nose, take a trim router, round over bit, and run up and down both sides. Okay, rafter layout. A number of different things are all happening at the same time here, because I want these rafters to line up nice and straight when I install them on the post. So, what I've done to start that is I've taken and measured over seven inches and squared a light line down on the interior face or the face that faces the two by fours in my built up post. Seven inches. That will give me a six inch cantilever over the back of the two 
by six portion of the first. Then, for my show side or my face side, I come over and locate the two by four itself. Here, that's seven and a quarter and ten and three quarters to each edge. Once I get once I get that, top left, bottom right, and I take my combination square. The left side is on the edge of the two by four. Then I just make a little dot with my pencil. I repeat that opposite corner down here. So now I know these will look uniform when they're installed. Finally, I'll install power lags to hold this fast, but to get it temp set, I'm gonna take some number 10s, HCRX, throw them in there. They also serve to drill a little pilot hole when I come back with the larger 5 16 by 3 power lag. Huh, did we get all that? Somebody install something. Install the rafter. I register my layout mark made earlier, seven inches back from the end of the rafter. Let's confirm that that's correct. It is. Now I'll register that to the edge of my two by four center ply. That looks good. Then with some good downward pressure to keep this joint tight, I'll take my slimpacto. those home. By the way, my new superpower is this never being in the right position for what I'm about to do. Oh, that's good right there. So close to the house here, I have to make sure I do this in order so I have access to fasten my rafter and so I don't interrupt myself with my fastening pattern with the next one. So instead of top left, bottom right, I'm going to go in the opposite direction. Top right, bottom left. I'll get those started so that I can get this on my layout line seven inches back. Good as you make it right there and then I'll trap it with these two fasteners and I'll come back with four inch five sixteenths power lags and go top left bottom right fasten the other rafter right here. Both will get that structural screw wood weld is what I call it. Okay, clampy clamps, do your thing. Okay. I checked my posts for plumb before I started installing my screen because you know when you want to know if they're plumb or not plumb? Now well before you've locked everything in place with your screen material. So I checked this one. It had nudged itself out just a little bit. Then I took some clamps, squeezed them together. I'll blow a few screws in here and we're good to go. So I've got layout marks on here and I've got blocks to help support the piece while I get it on the layout marks. But punchline is I'm using layout marks and not blocks so I don't telegraph a mistake through the whole pattern. By the way, I love the way this looks. First, I've got my last piece of the shade screen installed and I'm trying not to give too much of it away because I love it. My client designed it and I think it looks great. Now, for the part of these rafters that I've been waiting for, to take out the number 10 placeholder and replace it with a 5 16 by 4 coated 
power lag. That will get these pieces basically fused together and this is an all but permanent connection. Got my driver tip in. Having the screw placeholder here first essentially drills a pilot hole. I don't really need it, but I like it for insurance. It just makes me happy, so I'm going to keep running the camera. Okay. Now that I think I know what I'm doing, I can share it with you. These are the purlins for our shade structure, and purlins go across the tops of rafters. That's where that word comes from. I've got a six inch on center spacing up here, and I've pre-sorted and faced each one of my purlins so that I can just pull it up here and fasten it down. I had to put one out here at the end because I wanted to make sure that the rafter assemblies were running parallel with the uh, deck boards. So what I was able to do is come up here, out at the end, eyeball down, and line up the corner edge here with the corresponding deck board and get it into position. Then I was able to come back here and start putting my purlins on. But before I did that, before fastening this, I made myself a little jig so I could keep inch and a half spacing reflective of the inner ply of our built up posts. I think that's it. Now to put on purlins. I love this thing. I'm, I'm trying to do some scripted video thing. I can't contain myself. This is beautiful. My client designed it and he knocked it right out of the park. We've got our rafters held in with five sixteenths by four power lags. I had to think about that for a second. And we've got our two by two lattice cross this way and this way. All these posts are straight. I adore the way this came out. And I'm so glad I got a chance to both build it and share it with you. Well, that's it for this episode of the DIY Pro Show. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. And I'll see you next time in the workshop.